Hey guys and welcome back to our YouTube. I'm Tiffany and today I'm doing my very first unboxing. Today we're going to be unboxing the Harley Quinn life-size bust from Infinity Studios. Harley Quinn. <laughs> So we have gotten it out of our shipping packaging and we've got the box here which first impressions I'm not gonna lie I'm pretty excited about this I really love that they've got the silver logo with the Suicide Squad and it comes here with the sealed logo that they have on all of the Infinity Studios models that we do here so I'm pretty excited about this one so here we go Alrighty guys, so as you can see, it comes with the gloves that protect the model. So just when we're touching those, which we'll use later. And our certificate of authenticity. So this one here, we can see we've got Harley Quinn and we've got the model number th So as you can see, we've got quite a number of accessories that come with Harley Quinn. So this is going to be an exciting unboxing we've got here. Alrighty guys, so we've just gotten through the first tray of our accessories and now I've got the second tray.
Alrighty, and now we come to the model of Harley herself. So we've taken her out of the plastic just off camera because it was a bit tricky and she's quite heavy compared to what I was expecting. But we've still got the hairnet on and as you can see, she does come with her shirt on as well, which is quite nice. Some modesty is always nice. <laughs> Beautiful. So we'll pop her up and we'll get her onto the stand. Now, Harley is surprisingly heavy. So now that we have Harley and all of her accessories and pieces out of the box, we're now going to follow through our assembly instructions manual and set her up according to this. It's really important that you follow this one through to make sure that all of the pieces are put in the correct place and in the right order. Alrighty. So just starting by connecting the smoke to all the pieces of the back plate here. As we discussed before, it's really interesting that these pieces here are magnetic because they just kind of click on into place. Alrighty, now that we've got the smoke in place, we have our little joker emblem as well that we unboxed earlier. That one just sits in here in between the love and hate. And our Suicide Squad emblem as well, which just sits in here over her right hip. Sometimes it's a little bigger. Alrighty, so now we'll pop Harley's holster and her arms on. So the holster fits quite well over the back, just making sure it's centered. Alrighty. Move on to the arms. This is going to be fun. Sometimes it's good if you have an extra pair of hands to grab an extra pair of hands with this one just so you can hold the top and support the arm because you don't want the arm to fall out. Alrighty. Now that one's secure in place. So we've got that one in, and again, if you have a second pair of hands, it's really good just so you can get someone to support this arm as we pop in that pin. Alrighty, cool. Alrighty, so now we're moving on to attaching Harley's hands and the accessories that come with that. So we've got her gun here. So this one sets up quite interestingly. We've got the magnets to get in the piece, which I really, really like. I'll be talking about this in the reviews later too. So it just pops in that way. Piece popping there. And then also a finger that pops on the trigger. So just underneath that one. Beautiful. Alrighty, so moving on to the bracelets here, we've got the yes and the sir, so pop these on our wrists. Alrighty, so moving on to her spiked bracelets as well. Alrighty. So getting these on is a bit of a squeeze. 
they're just a bit tight and they don't fit perfectly but I suppose that's kind of traditionally how these bangle bracelets kind of work. For this one here it might be easier to actually take the hand off with the gun. Just pop it over the top. Alrighty, nice and secure. Alrighty, and back to our pudding choker. I might come around the back and just pop this one on. got a really cool design that I didn't notice earlier but the little lock that pins this is actually attached so we'll tighten this one up and what we'll do is we'll find the hole we'll insert our little lock all right so that was quite fiddly if you don't have much dexterity this might be something you need a hand with but now that that's on I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Alrighty now, moving on to her finer jewellery. So her earrings here. Beautiful. So it did say, whoop, that's the back bud, that you had to pierce through it yourself. Beautiful. Once else it's in it, it stays quite secure. Coming around to the other side, the same thing. So just finding a way where the little hole is and then puncturing through the ear. Beautiful. And a little pop there as well. All right. And then we've got Harley's little ear cuff here as well. This one sits over this first earring initially. It just sits up. Like that. Alrighty, and so we have this little piece here as well, which I believe I initially said was a finger piece, but it is actually the piece of the shoulder that sits in just under the fabric of clothing there. And it is used for when we paste the bat into her hand so that it doesn't slide off the shoulder when we've got it placed there. Okay, so just before we move on to the last major accessory, we have the two hair pieces here. And we'll take Harley's hair out of the hairnet. If you happen to have like a little hairbrush at home or anything like that, this is always a good time to just make sure there's no tangles or knots before you place any of the accessories on there. You can see she's got her front face framing pieces there, which we'll just touch up later. Alrighty, now we've got the hair out of the hairnet, we're going to pop the accessories on. So, red goes on the red side, and blue goes on the blue side. Who would have guessed? Again, another feature that I love, which I keep talking about, is these pieces are magnetic, so they're super easy to pop in. Whoop, we've lost the earring, we'll grab that later. Oh, this is going to be fun. Beautiful. So they clip in and funnily enough, getting all that hair to sit in one place wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. They do, although want to kind of come out a bit, but you can just tease that in and push that back. Alrighty. So again, getting that bottom piece, which is definitely the easy way to do it, placing it right at the base of where that elastic band is and then just clipping them together on top. And if it's not closing perfectly, just pull that hair through a bit until the strands sit nicely. Just give it a little pinch. Oop. Again, sometimes you just might need to adjust her hair a little bit. But there we are. So the last piece we have here with our Harley Quinn is our baseball bat. So this one here, as I mentioned just before with a little piece on the shoulder, slides into the hand. So I think I mentioned when we were unboxing that the hands have a little bit of flexibility. So that one just sits in there in her fingers. 
Another thing that I did like about Harley's hand here, which if I take the bat out and you come a little bit closer, you can see that there is a slight groove. So a slight groove where the base of the handle is designed to sit. So one little detail that I think I quite admire there. Alrighty, so now that we have Harley all set up and out of the box, let's talk a little bit about Infinity Studios. Infinity Studios is based in China, so that's where they make their products. And they are one of the biggest uh, high-end collectible companies that do these life-size models. They also do ratios from one to one and all the way down to one to seven, but they're most renowned for their life-size half torso busts, which are done from anything from DC models to Lord of the Rings and many others. Alrighty, so moving on to talking about the Harley Quinn model herself. So she is a one-to-one -one size scale bust from Infinity Studios and this is based off the character from the Suicide Squad movie in 2016 that's played by Margot Robbie. Now something I find super interesting about Harley Quinn's character is that she is the accomplice and lover of the Joker and her backstory is quite interesting in the sense that she is renowned for being a psychologist who was in the Gotham City Arkham Asylum where she met the Joker and was manipulated into falling in love with him and now is his accomplice. So that is Harley Quinn's story, which I always love and I can relate to. So yeah, as I said, played by Margot Robbie in the Suicide Squad movie, this statue here, which I have the um, certificate of authenticity with, uh, as you can see, she is model out of 899. So that is the size of this collection and that is the only number that they have worldwide. So the 899, that's it. Now Harley models, uh, this model from Infinity Studios costs approximately 6,000 uh, Australian dollars and that is inclusive of the freight charge and the taxes now as well. She comes in just the one box with all of her extra accessories which you saw I take down and weighs approximately 33 kilos. The sizing of Harley here, she's a little bit bigger than most busts that are done by Infinity Studios, the life-size one-to-one ratios. And as you can see, she's almost bigger than I am here. Her dimensions from what I've got here is that she is a width of 88 centimeters. She's a height of 77 centimeters and her depth from front to back is 46 centimeters. Alrighty, so now we're going to run through a head to toe, bit of a review, pick out the details and note the things that are really important about this model. So with Harley, we've got the hair here, which is very lifelike, it's styled just like it's done in the movie. And now all of these individual hair strands are hand punched into the scalp. So there's over a hundred thousand of these little hair follicles that have been punched in by hand to give this beautiful detail and styling. Now moving down and having a look at the face, We've got the medical grade platinum silicon here. Now this is such a lifelike -life texture. Now coming down, you can see that on this side here, we've got the tattoo. So the tattoo is inked in across and just painted on the rotten tattoo. We can also see in the detail, we've got her heart there and our makeup smears. Just moving the hair across. Coming around to the other side, we can see we've got the blue makeup smear there. And you can see that her skin has such a skin-like texture. There's that mottledness when you come up close that looks so very lifelike on that silicon. Coming down, we can see that she's got the glass eyes there that look extremely lifelike. Lots of fine work and detail that's gone into those and the eyebrows have also been hand punched in and styled along with the eyelashes there that are from real eyelash extensions that look really nice and natural on the model. Alrighty, so coming down, looking at the lips and around the mouth there, you can see that it's such a lifelike smile, just like Margot Robbie's in the movie. She's got a paint and glossy red lip there, which is very iconic. In some areas of the movie, I know that, that gets smudged, but they've gone with the classic unsmudged lip there. That's got a beautiful paint and gloss. And looking at the hair again, you can see that it's a very nice ombre effect with the hair. It's not just a straight block line. They've done a really good job at making sure that it blends really nice. Now coming around and looking at the ears also, we've got her jewellery there. So it's a nice plated gold jewellery. Looks very nice, fine details and sits snugly on the ear. The ear shape is very lifelike with that platinum grade medical silicon as well again. Sitting in on the other side as well. So moving down from the face and the hair, we come down into the neck and the transition from the neck to the body. So we've got the choker here, very much like the one in the movie, beautiful. The gold and the gold plates and the pudding. 
Now, coming down, you can sort of see, I'll just move the collar slightly instead of taking it off, that there is the transition from the neck to the body there. So that silicon grade ends down into the harder polystone body there. Now, I think it would have been a lot better if they had have, instead of done the transition and tried to hide it with the collar, that they had have done it underneath lower in the neckline where you didn't see it or it was covered by clothing because that was one of the first things we noticed when we took the Harley model out of the box was that there was that very obvious demarcation line and you can see around the collar that there is that difference in colour between the silicon and the polystone. Moving down along we've also got her clothing as well which is very much like the traditional clothing and you can feel along. Now if you have a look under here, there is some see-through of a tattoo that's done on the polystone, which is her daddy's little monster tattoo. So we'll lift that up and we'll have a little look. Right, you can see she's got her bra in the polystone as well that's painted on. But there's that tattoo there on the polystone that's painted on as well if you ever felt to undress her. But you can see that come through the light parts of the white fabric as well. Looking at the holster as well, it is very much like the initial design in the movie that she wears that fit quite nicely. So coming down into the arms, we have got the platinum medical grade silicon again here. So that comes down off from the polystone arm again, as we can see. Now the arms here lock in with pins. If I can bring this one up high enough. So as we place the arm, it locks in with a pin that we insert. Now, one thing that's really good if you have an extra set of hands when putting the arms in is just to get someone to hold and support the arm when you put that pin in. It's a little bit tricky to do with one person. As you saw, I got my cameraman to assist me. And it's just to risk, especially if you're doing it off a table or off a soft surface, you don't want to drop the arm and damage the silicon. So just get someone to help support that arm. They are kind of heavy while you're putting those pins in around that clothing, which can be tri tricky. Now coming down and looking at the details of Harley's arm here, we've got the tattoo, so the blue and red inking again on the arm, on the silicon, and that pat patterning there that we see, that trends with those card shapes. Now initially the design, the creators, they had painted it higher up on the forearm, and so they have corrected that and moved it back down to the correct positioning here. Looking at the jewellery again, much like the puddin collar, we've got the bracelets with the leather, and then the gold embling of yes. We've also got the gold spiked bracelet. One thing that I noticed, and I think I mentioned when putting this on the wrist, was that these are a little bit of a tight fit, so sometimes just pulling the metal a little bit apart, but that's something that I know a lot of people might be a bit concerned about when putting on expensive quality props that come with this model and the accessories. Moving up into the hand, again with this medical grade silicon we have such lifelike designs. As you can see I've got the textures in my palm here just as Harley does here in hers. So very fine detailing that you can see coming up and around the fingers which are soft as well. That soft silicon that wraps around that bat to help when you pull the bat out. Which we'll come back and look at in a moment. But yes, we've got her gold ring again on her finger. All of the jewellery that Harley is wearing is of a gold plating, so that's just her natural tone that she wears with that. But again, looking as we crease our fingers over, we can see the detail that's been worked into these knuckles here, and even the thumb print as well that you've got. The nail polish as well has a nice little shimmer to it, very natural as you can see most nail polishes do, so they've done a really good job making that very lifelike there. Now, coming and looking to the details of the bat here, you can see that it's painted on. The details are very lifelike, very much like the traditional prop in the movie. Coming down with the good knight, obviously for when she hits her, her victims with this. Coming down the handle, that patterning again like her tattoo, the card sort of stripes. It is a real traditional wooden bat. It's quite dense, quite heavy. The one detail I think I would notice on the bat that I don't think is quite as good is there could have been a bit more weathering on this handle with the baseball bat. It is a used weapon. It is something that's been used multiple times. But um, yeah, just a bit of texturing. It does look just a little bit too clean, I think, for a weapon that's sort of traditionally to be with this model. Another little detail that I did mention that I really liked about the hand as well is there is that slight indent there for where the bat is designed to sit. So it does just aid a little bit better when popping, popping that one in there. And you can move the thumb around or underneath desired to where you would like that to sit. 
Another small detail on the torso there as we come down onto the polystone, if I just move my arm out of the way, is we've got that little notch there that we placed, which sits under the clothing there, but as you can see, it's designed to hold the bat in place so that it doesn't roll off Harley's shoulder there. Okay, coming around to the other side here now, we've got the hand with the gun again. So again, as I said with the other side, the pin's there, getting someone to support you and popping the arm on before you attach the hand, which as we can see here, is a separate model and comes off. <laughs> Alrighty, so again, that silicon, that silicon there that's of a medical grade, it's got that real texturing, that real colouring of skin that you can see really nicely designed. Similar to the other bracelet on the other side there, the purple leather strap with the sir and the gold and the gold spiked wrist again. It was easier again before to take the hand off and just pop this one over the top rather than to try and force it around the silicon. Okay, now moving on to Harley's gun here. We'll have a look at her hand here first. So unlike the hand on the right side where she's holding the bat, they've opted for the polystone again here. And I think it loses a lot of the details, the intricate details that you have on Harley's other hand here that you have in the silicon. Looking at it, we also have the removable finger, which I think could have been done in silicon, but I suppose keeping it much like the hand you have here. But I just think the nails look somewhat real, but the skin itself look too much like the nails that have the evil paint on them. There's just not quite enough texturing painting that kind of makes this look as lifelike as it could be but they've done what they can given the polystone now looking at the glove though they've done a fantastic job putting the details in this one you can see all the texture of the sort of leather and the rippling that you would have on her traditional glove another thing you could probably consider though is the wear and tear it could look a little bit more worn i think in that sense to sort of match the character's rustic look. Now coming up to the gun here. So the gun, we've got the revolving piece, it comes out. So this is all magnetic when you set it up. Whoop. Magnetic piece is there. And the revolver comes out as well. So that's a magnetic piece. It's got the round of bullets in it. It is functioning, so it does rotate as well. As you can see, it's got the love and the hate on them. Connect that one back in. Now, Harley's gun here. So it is the ornately decorated gun. As you can see, they've got all the details that have been painted on, as well as her initials and her body count, her kills. Let's get your head out of the gutter, guys. Get your head out of the gutter. So her body count and her kills there. So this is the kills that she's had with this gun. So this is the Chopper Rhino. It's a 60 DS. So this is the revolver that's used and it usually uses with a 357 Magnum and it's, that's its main caliber there. Um, it's famous for its eccentric design. It's very unique, unique to Harley. All the detailing you can see is painted there and it has the multiple components as well and the functionality which we've already seen with the revolver. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, so we'll pop this one back in. And it does sit quite nicely over the hand. You just have to sort of give it a little bit of a twist and a fiddle just to make sure it sits firmly on the hand. You can also see there you've got the joker detail and the butt of the gun as well. Alrighty, and lastly, sort of looking at Harley's clothing here as well, you can see that they've got some details here that they've done. They've got the tears around the collar. So they have put that detailing in there that does show those little rips like it has been worn and used, which does fit her character. They've got the fine stitching that they've stitched in along here, along with, along with the dye. You can see it's like they've got that blood look again, like she's been killing. Again, like her little tattoo that we explored on her chest just here, we do have Daddy's Little Monster on her shirt, which is the iconic look that we see on the character. Again, we've got the stitching. You can see the polystone bra through there as well. The rips in the shirt look very authentic and match the ones that we see on the character. Black stitching again there. You can see again that we've got the polystone there as well. I do think it really does, it doesn't quite do it justice compared to the medical grade silicon. You can see that they've tried to create a little bit of texturing when you feel it, but it's just not quite the same. It's not the same as if you had that colouring and that texture that you can paint onto the silicon. 
Now as we come down, we look at the base here. So we've got the main base plate here with the details and we see this diamond pattern a lot with the cards. We also see the smoke and the stars that wrap around Harley there. We see the Suicide Squad emblem there that all magnetically click in as well. So again, when we set up the base plate, we noticed that there's those magnets there that we really like. And also our little joker that sits in with our love-hate, which matches our little theme that we've got with the revolver up here as well. Alrighty, so looking at the full complete Harley life-size bus after going from head to toe and kind of nitpicking some of the details, the three main things that I really liked were the likeness to Margot Robbie. I think they've done a really good job at getting the complexion, the skin texture, the detailing of the eyebrows and the shape, the glass eyes there. I think they've done a really good job with that, perfecting the makeup, the smile. I think they've really encompassed Margot Robbie in this and the model of Harley Quinn. Another thing that I really liked is they have shadowed the root. It does make it look very natural. One thing that people did sort of complain and dislike was that the forehead looks too big. I think bringing the front money pieces down and with a bit of styling for that, it does still look very lifelike and I think that can be overlooked. Another thing that I really, really liked about the detailing of everything here was the magnetic components. I really liked that everything was super simple, that it clicked into the base plate with these parts, that the fingers all clicked in, the detailing on the gun and the revolver and how that all clips in as well. And that takes me to my third point that I really like, one of the pros apart this model, is with the details here as well. They've put a lot of thought into the revolver and the gun and the details, the signatures, the body count on the gun. They've done a really good job encompassing all of the details here on this. They've blended the hair in nicely. Again, coming down and looking at all the texture on the silicon and the tattooing, I think they have done a really good job making a lifelike full-size bust of my, uh, Harley Quinn and Margot Robbie here. Mm -hmm. Now moving on to the cons and the things that I didn't like so much about the bust that we've got here. So one of the things that I think could have made this better and isn't necessarily a con is that we could have had LEDs along the base here. So you could have added that lighting in behind the smoke that could have given it a very kind of lit up effect. We see that in the Joker somewhat and we see that in other busts that they've done that are quite common in the sense that they've added that LED and it just adds a little bit more of a touch that kind of brings the bust to life. Another thing that I found that I couldn't quite kind of look past and overlook was the jewellery. When, when attaching that on I found that it just especially these bangles here, the metal ones, getting them on and off, you kind of had to adjust them a little bit or take the hand off. And for me, having done an unboxing for my very first time, it did make me feel a little bit uncomfortable. I didn't want to damage the silicon. I didn't want to have to bend the jewelry and make it fit, but that is the only way I could kind of get the jewelry on. Um, and again, when it comes to my last con, it's extremely hard to overlook. And I think a lot of people have somewhat kind of agreed with this. It is the, the change, the transition from the head and the silicon to the body down to that polystone. It is just so obvious and it does take away from all that detail that they've worked so hard to build into this lifelike model. Yeah, I just think you're not able to get the same kind of skin-like consistency and texture that you have on the silicone that you do on the polystone and that kind of takes away as well. And looking at the curve of... Um, Harley Quinn here as well, you notice that it's kind of, it's not really a lifelike shape to bust. It's a very me nitpicking being a female, but I think in her character, she looks much fuller and there's a lot more cleavage that I think despite the t-shirt and despite the polystone gets taken away a little bit. But overall, the likeness and the things that I really appreciate were that they have done a really good job. Like I said, coming back to the likeness with Harley Quinn here, I remember being shown before we did the unboxing when we were talking about this earlier, having a look at the images that were advertised on the website and the, the images of the model that were placed. And I just think that they didn't do this model justice. I think the images that were displayed really didn't grasp the concept. Looking at those, I was like, oh, you know, I can kind of tell it's obviously Harley Quinn and I can see that it's Margot Robbie. But looking at this model here in the bust, I think they've done an extremely good job at making it look extremely lifelike. They've 
they've gone to the effort of putting in those extra details of the tattoos, of the guns, of the clothing and the fingernails and the hands that really make it seem like Harley Quinn here. So I'm very, very happy with those overall details and how it's come together despite some of the cons. Sorry. That concludes our unboxing set up and review of the Infinity Studios Harley Quinn life-size bust. So my rating for Harley Quinn today, I really think she is incredibly lifelike and I think they have gone to a lot of detail for things. And I love the magnets. I think that was a really great little touch that they've done for this, for this bust setting that up. But there's a few little details that I can't overlook, like the transition from the silicon in the head and the arms into the polystone body. I think they've really kind of just skipped a few steps and made it a little bit easier than trying to do it with they have with some of their other models, particularly when you look at Wonder Woman, they've done the polystone, the details of her suit there really well. And when you look at the Joker as well, we have behind us from other unboxings, the details of the clothing there and the silicon, they've done a bit better job at that. But overall, I think Harley Quinn does deserve a solid eight out of 10 for this rating. We just wanted to express concerns regarding the limited edition models and some transparency around how many numbers of an editions are going to be brought out worldwide. Anyway, moving on, let us know in the comments what new life-size bus you would like us to unbox and do reviews and setups for. We've got Catwoman, Mira and Batman in the list that we're going to be bringing out on this channel shortly. But do let us know if there's other life-size bus that you would like us to see. Do let us know what you thought of the Harley Quinn model and the review on that. This was my very first unboxing and I had a really fun time unboxing Harley, getting to know her, looking through all of her details and I hope to do some more soon. See ya!